I've got this super cool vintage microphone. It's the RCA BK5B, and from what I know, it's supposed to sound really nice. I only have one problem with it. Uh, on the other side of this cable is this. So this is a decent soldering job, um, but clearly it was meant as some kind of test to make sure if the mic actually worked, um, and then was just never actually fixed up and prettied up. Um, there's no back casing to this quarter inch connector at all. It does not exist. Um, I don't know how old this is, so I don't know if there ever really even was one. Um, but also the fact that it's quarter inch is not great um, because this is the longest cable in the world um, which will undoubtedly cause some noise. Uh, that plus the fact that none of this is properly shielded or anything. Um, I mean just listen for yourself. This is what it sounds like. You can hear there is just some weird buzz all the time. Um, and sometimes it gets weirder, though I'm not sure if I'm capturing that on the audio right now, but sometimes it sounds super strange. Yeah, so my goal is to replace this with an actual XLR, um, and hopefully pretty it up a little bit, and see if, uh, that will fix all of the problems of the sound of this thing. So I decided to start by opening up the bottom of the mic. This only took a few screws at the bottom, and I wanted to do this just to see what goes where inside, because I really wasn't sure, and on the other side, I wasn't sure which cable was supposed to go where. When I got it open, I was greeted with this board. I really wasn't expecting this. It had uh, A, B, C, D, E, and F listed on it, and the three wires were connected. The green was connected to a screw, so we're going to assume this is going to be ground. Uh, our white cable was connected to C, and our black cable was connected to A. Uh, there were a few more cables that went through the middle of this board that actually connected to the switch on the bottom of the microphone where it has M, V1, and V2. I looked online and I couldn't really find much information about what the other options are. Uh, B and D have metal on them, whereas E and F don't. I assume that this same board was used for other mics, but I couldn't really see how it was done. After that, I closed it up and got started on the XLR that I was scrapping. This cable doesn't work. I decided to scrap this old cable that I have because I couldn't really figure out where the issue on the cable was. It wasn't actually on one of the ends, so it was somewhere in the middle. And also, you know, recycling is good, save some money, no reason to buy a new thing when I've got stuff already. So I opened up the connector by removing a single screw and I started with desoldering the pins. This went fine. There was no problem with this part, uh, but the next part was quite a hassle. The surface in which the pins lived seemed to be crimped on to the cable itself and I don't really have a good tool to remove something like that. I tried opening it up while it was connected. That didn't really work. So I started just to try to strong arm it and pull the thing off. I wound up ripping the metal piece from the plastic piece. Luckily that wasn't too big of a deal. Uh, they connect back together, really no problem. And that actually gave me enough space to be able to pull it apart. Once I got this crimped part removed, I was able to use my needle nose pliers and pry this thing open. It honestly took a lot out of me. Am I weak? Was it strong? I don't know. Now that I had my connector pretty much ready to go, I moved on to desoldering the original quarter inch from the mic itself. Desoldering again wasn't too bad. It was especially easy because I could really just pull this thing off. But then I had to get the wires ready to be able to be soldered onto the connector that I'm putting on. Opening this up was pretty difficult. That old braiding was really kind of gross to deal with. It was like shedding and just making a mess. And it was really kind of hard to cut open. I mean, it was good quality. It was just messy. 
I slipped on the sleeve. It was a very tight fit, but with a little bit of a twisting motion, I was able to push it on. From there, I started soldering on the new connector. This kind of became harder than I was expecting because while I was warming up the pin to be able to solder the wire on, it was getting so hot that it started melting the plastic case a little bit. This happened really bad with one of the pins and totally knocked it out of place. I had to then rewarm it up so that it would melt again and push it back into place and then let it cool off. After that happened, I realized I needed to be pretty quick with it and not leave that soldering iron on there too long. The way I wired it up is I put my black cable on the three pin, the white cable on the two pin, and for the ground pin, the one pin, we soldered the shield to it. When the soldering was done, I basically got to recrimp the metal piece back onto this new cable, uh, which was a lot easier than having to remove it, so that was nice. After that, all I had to do was put the two pieces together, screw in that screw, and I was done. Hi. <laughs> all right, so we're back at the computer, and I'm about to press record and see the comparison. All right, so this is the... Uh same microphone but with the new connection um i haven't changed any settings on the interface at all um i might need to change the volume this kind of looks like maybe it's a little louder but i'm not 100 percent sure uh if that's just me being excited so i'm talking louder all right so i'm gonna start talking uh this is what it sounds like you can hear there is just some weird buzz all the time. That's it. Uh, this wasn't too bad of a little project. Um, I think the biggest issues that I had with this are uh, I probably should have just bought one of these connectors instead of scrapping it from another thing. I felt like that kind of added more difficulty than it needed, um, especially because this is its not really the best um, one of these that I've dealt with so um kind of sucked dealing with um and then obviously the cable itself was kind of a hassle because it's super old it's got all that old braiding inside and stuff um kind of difficult to deal with but i guess what can i expect with a mic from like the 50s um but overall i'm, I'm really glad it worked out uh it sounds a lot better now there's not a horrible noise happening um and i might actually be able to use this properly sometime. Uh, next up though, I'm gonna figure out a thing to put here so that this isn't so flopsy. But thank you for watching. Um, if this helped at all, uh, please let me know. If you have a better technique on anything that I did, please let me know. Um, leave a comment, like the video if you liked it, Subscribe if you like videos like this. I do sometimes this thing sometimes. It's YouTube, you know, you go on it. Um, you watch stuff. So, I'll catch you next time, and goodbye.